thank you so much for joining us live. I know the setup looks just a titch bit different for a couple of reasons. Uh, first and foremost, obviously the Glutathon Authority, Alan Ogden, is missing. Uh, he decided to go for a run today and uh, he was running while they were spraying some beetle killing uh, pesticides or chemicals. Um, and we're thinking it may have actually kind of taken him out and he's not feeling so hot. It's a really good thing he can double and triple dose on his uh, glutathione producing products. So I'm sure he'll be over it and he'll be back next week and I don't even think he'll need that much downtime. But he's nursing an upset stomach right now and he wasn't able to uh, literally even make it to the car to get over here. So I have another handsome man by my side and uh, he's gonna fill the void beautifully and give us the opportunity to learn something that we really, really need to learn more about. And there is a big, massive void uh, in the health arena um, when it comes to the understanding of and people that are really educating on this, which is why um, I personally have him as a part of my Love Magnet program. Um, so each and every one of my clients that comes and does the healing work with me, they also go and see uh, this lovely man to get uh, specific testing done that gives them phenomenal information to be really proactive about their health. And the reason that I actually ended up bringing him to the table in the first place was because I had a client that I had gone through the program with, my healing program, and I had actually exhausted um, my skills and what I was able to do and then of course I ended up going and looking at some different practitioners that could help me with what was going on with her and what was amazing was as soon as I brought him to the table he immediately was able to ask a very pertinent question that gave us an answer that that really gave us information that we knew was creating uh, health issues and then once we did the testing we were able to get all sorts of information above and beyond that that she was able to utilize that support her health wise and made me realize how phenomenally important it is to pay attention to what he is educating us about so i am absolutely honored to have him sitting at the table next to me and be honored to consider him to be a colleague that i work with and on top of that also a phenomenal friend i really have adopted him into my family and uh, we like to have him over for Christmas and Thanksgiving and all that wonderful stuff. And both my boys love this guy. He's absolutely amazing. So on a professional level, he's a wellness speaker and an author. He's a clinical practitioner. He is the leading voice in promoting mineral-based nutrition and health education. He specialized uh, in science outside of the most standard medical and nutritional schooling. He came into this work only after a tragedy that happened uh, to his family and seeking a lack of medical and society understanding at the time. There was not a lot of information out there at the time to explain what it was that he had experienced in regards to his trauma. So he went on an amazing journey just like I did to understand how to resolve this and how to make sense of it. Just like I did struggling with my concussion and not being able to find answers through allopathic medicine, he experienced something very similar with the tragedy that he experienced. He went on to create what is today the world's number one support site for copper toxicity. Number one, with 5,000 plus hours of study in the various minerals, magnesium, zinc, and potassium, and more, and seeing every day in clinical practice how mineral imbalances affect so many of today's most common conditions, he created an online self-study course called Mineral Mastery, which I shared with you guys earlier. And I will, anybody who has any questions about it, please feel free to ask us, because that's why he's here. Uh, and this is to help empower others and bring this vital information to the world. Now, I asked um, Rick to join us today because the work that we do in the training room and the work that he does is becoming more and more recognized. And I think it's pivotal in helping us to understand how it is that what we recommend you guys taking is affected by and supported by understanding your mineral health. Thank you so much for joining us, Rick. 
Thank you, Harmony. I got some big shoes to fill in two ways. One, I'm <laughs> sitting here in, Al in uh, Alan's chair, and uh, secondly, um, how do I beat that introduction? I probably can't, um, but as <laughs> most of you know, uh, Harmony Woodington beside me here, she is sort of my hypnotherapist, uh, hip hypno therapist, hypnotherapist, hypnotherapist yeah. um, a phenomenal energy healer, um, the creator of the Love Magnet program, CEO of Flutathione Authority, um, and also a, a great friend as well. So I'm happy to be here. Um, it's uh, kind of lonely here without Alan, but Harmony, <laughs> you and I can do this. Uh, so I want to welcome everybody out there to, I guess, my world, which is the world of minerals. Um, I'll be teaching you about some of the foundational aspects of minerals, things that uh, just really are not being taught out there. Um, not being taught out there in medical school, not being taught out there in, in standard nutrition school, uh, and just off the radar of most people. So we take our minerals really for granted. Uh, you know, when you think of minerals, first thing that probably pops into your head is calcium, right? Don't take calcium for your bones, um, maybe some zinc, right? Um, that's the common things that people think of. And then um, we talk about and think about uh, mercury in our fillings and stuff. I know that's something that's been yeah. in talks a lot. And then, you know, what the fish are carrying too. I think we're told not to have tuna because it's got yeah. a lot of mercury in it, right? Yeah. So there's certain things that there's a lot of talk about. But outside of that, there really is not much in the way of education that's out there, easy access. Right. Outside right. of you. And, and that's why I created the mastery, <laughs> which oh, I mean, we can get into that more later. But, you know, in terms of the metals like mercury, aluminum, arsenic, uranium, <clears throat> they all are connected also to our minerals and our minerals are connected to our vitamins. They're all interconnected. So one of the key concepts to understand is when you take any mineral, you are affecting a cascade of changes across your entire mineral profile. If you take zinc, you're affecting all the other minerals, or most of the other minerals. If you take calcium, you're creating a cascade of changes. Um, your body is taking on mercury, you're affecting your minerals. You balance your minerals, you're allowing your body to release those metals, okay? Um, without minerals, all the vitamins that we spend money on are useless. The vitamins need minerals to function properly. So minerals are, essentially the spark plugs of life. They were called that um, years ago by Dr. Henry Schroeder, uh, MD, uh, and they really are the spark plugs of life. Without minerals, life would not exist. Um, so minerals are essential for the health of our bones, our immune system, cardiovascular system, digestive system, thyroid, uh, reactions to stress, personality, like all of these things are connected um, to minerals. Minerals regulate all of these functions. Um, and I think one of the big problems is that most people don't consider mineral imbalances. And I know when I speak to people at, at shows, health shows and whatnot, um, oh no, my minerals are fine. You know, I've got enough potassium. I had a banana this morning, my, my potassium is fine. Yeah. You know, and it's just, it's nothing is, is further from the truth. That's not the way minerals work. Um, so everybody has mineral deficiencies and toxicities. And when you understand what, um, you know, what your unique imbalances are, then you can work to balance those imbalances to correct health conditions that are showing up. Uh, and it also gives you a much deeper understanding of the whole field of health and nutrition to begin with. Um, so there is a, a document um, put out by the U.S. Senate a few years ago, um, and it said 99% of the American population has mineral deficiencies. Wow. And a marked deficiency in any one of those minerals will lead to disease. Wow. 99%. Now, That's huge. Hang on. Here's the kicker. I said a few years ago, I was choking about that. The year was 1936. Oh my gosh. Okay. So back in 1936, the U.S. government was recognizing that 99% of the population had mineral deficiencies that affect health. That was like 90 years ago. That's amazing. Eight, yeah, something like that. 80, yeah. 80, yeah. 80 something. Something years ago. Yeah. I'm rounding up a little. <laughs> but that's still, that's yeah. incredible. And the, the content of our soils in this 80-something year period has 
has gone down in, in, in terms of nutritional value has gone down dramatically. So if 99% were deficient 80 years ago, we're talking now like 99.999% are deficient in something. Um, so recognizing that deficiencies are very common. Everybody's got deficiencies. Um, and we don't recognize this because of our conventional way of testing, which is through blood. And I will talk about blood in a moment. Um, but maybe like why? Why are we deficient, first of all, in, in minerals? And there's a lot of reasons. Um, so one, I mentioned soil. So our soils today are much less nutrient dense than they were 50, 100 years ago. Uh, reliance on like junk food. And I'm sure none of you are eating junk food, but a lot of people do. Um, junk food is nutritionally deplete, obviously. Um, GMO foods, GMO foods are uh, much less nutrient dense than non-GMO foods. Difficult to avoid. Hard, yeah, impossible. Pretty much impossible to avoid these yeah. days. Uh, glyphosate, glyphosate is a key ingredient in Roundup, which is sprayed on a large portion of our crop supply, which chelates out many of the key minerals. Um, antagonistic relationships between minerals, which means that as you take one uh, nutrient, that is having a synergistic, helping or antagonistic effect on other minerals. So by taking one mineral without really knowing what you're doing, you could be depleting another mineral in that process. Um, stress, stress depletes key minerals, especially um, you know magnesium and zinc and potassium. Uh, alcohol, caffeine, um, pregnancy. So in pregnancy, um, the woman's zinc content uh, depletes by about half while her copper goes up. And this wow. copper zinc imbalance, we'll talk about more um, in this uh, video. But there's a lot of reasons why um, everybody is affected by mineral imbalances. Okay, so you're telling me that pretty much everybody has some kind of an imbalance or another going on. So how do I go about finding out where <clears throat> my minerals are at? Okay, well, the conventional way of, of testing is you do a blood test. So the blood test, this is if, if you leave with nothing else from this, from this video, leave with this. Blood is homeostatic, which means it's always working to return itself to a homeostatic, safe, healthy range. If, for example, your blood magnesium drops a little bit, you would die. So the body will do everything it can to maintain that homeostatic level in the blood within a certain range. So nine times out of 10 or more, blood tests will come back showing, okay, well, your magnesium, your potassium, your zinc, your copper, whatever, is within range. Sometimes it's a little high, a little low, but it's going to miss what's happening at the cell and tissue level. Okay. The blood is a transport system. Yep. Our biochemistry happens in our cells and our tissue. Well, mainly our cells, but our tissue too. And blood does not pick up the cellular and tissue levels. This is exactly why we actually recommend um, optimizing glutathione using the precursor amino acids because if you use an exogenous glutathione, you don't get intracellular activity. So we are a big, huge proponent of that. Yeah, yeah. And uh, actually this morning, um, one of my clients was asking about a friend of hers who had very high blood potassium. And I know this, this man is on uh, medications containing fluoride. So even if the blood level shows high, for example, in this case, potassium, well, is that blood potassium, uh, sorry, is, is that is the body level of potassium really high? No, it's not. There is no valid reason for anybody in this day and age to have a truly high potassium level at the cell level. So in the blood, potassium can be showing high, and that can be because of renal uh, failure, it's not being excreted, or the more likely cause is it's not getting into the cell. So there's something blocking the ion channels preventing potassium from getting into the cell. So I, I know this gentleman actually has depleted pota potassium at the cell level, and yet his blood test shows high. So the doctor says, of course, don't take potassium. Well, you're not gonna be fixing his underlying potassium deficiency at the cell level by following that advice. Now granted, you do wanna be careful. If blood potassium is high, then yes, you have to figure out what's going on and, and you know, um, proceed cautiously. 
because if that blood potassium goes too high, that can be dangerous and, and fatal. Um, but what's happening in most cases is there is either a fluoride or a halide um, or mercury. One of those things is blocking the cell receptor sites, the ion channels, from allowing potassium to get into the cell. So it's backing up in the bloodstream. Blood shows high, doctor says you're high, don't take supplements, and yet he is ultimately potassium deficient at the cell level. Um, so we have I've got something that's come yeah, up really quick, and this is actually a particular um, summit you can speak to for one of our amazing, lovely uh, people in our audience, Amanda. She said she just had a blood analysis done and was recommended to take copper, zinc, selenium, and potassium. So what do you have to say to that? A blood analysis? A blood analysis. Okay, so, well, but on what basis are they recommending they're, bit, they're obviously they're recommending this, uh, you know, because they did a blood test and this is what they're seeing deficiencies in, in the blood, just like you said, right? Right, right. Um, so with the selenium, sorry, there is selenium, zinc, uh, copper, and what else? Sorry, copper, zinc, selenium, and potassium. Okay. Live blood cell under the microscope, she said. Okay, okay. Um, so I would want to really know what's happening at the tissue level as well before I say anything. Uh, I think very safely, um, it would be pretty safe to say that the zinc, selenium, and potassium are probably going to be helpful for you. Um, I would be much more cautious though with the copper. Okay, and I will explain the copper. Um, it will probably be like a whole section in this video on, on copper. Um, as far as the selenium is concerned, yeah. love, I just want to let you know that you're taking the immunity and if you're taking the immunity, you're getting the selenium in there. Um, so it's actually more accurate to take a different test that's actually going to let you know what's going on intercellular because if you're optimizing your glutathione, we know that the formula that's in here has the glutamine, cysteine, glycine and the selenium in there, which is the activating agent that allows your body to actually be able to utilize the glutathione intercellularly. So just like what uh, Rick was saying, we actually want to know what's going on inside the cells, not necessarily inside the blood. So I'm a little bit concerned about the selenium recommendation. Yeah, like 98% of your body's potassium is in the cell, not the blood. So, and, and same thing with magnesium, 99%, well, sorry, um, let me back up. Two thirds of your body's magnesium is in your skeleton and your teeth. One percent of your body's magnesium is in your blood, and zero point three percent of that um, of your body's magnesium is in the blood serum. And this is the standard that doctors are looking at when they're testing you is blood. So again, one percent of your body's magnesium is in your blood. One to two percent of your potassium is in your blood. So this is why just looking at blood. You know, I, I'm not going to say yes or no based on a blood test. Um, I will say yes or no based more on what I see, you know, very frequently. Um, chances are that, you know, you probably do have um, a, a higher need for potassium and selenium and zinc. Um, copper, perhaps not. So she's saying copper is low dose for a short term, or okay. sh sh cop low dose short term for parasites. Okay. So What's, what's low dose? Like two, what's, what's low dose? If you can let us know what um, they're recommending low dose stuff, that would be absolutely fantastic. So if she was to get more information uh, or get a more accurate picture of what's going on in her minerals, how would she go about doing that? Well, the, the hair tissue mineral analysis is the gold standard for looking at what's happening at the cell and tissue level. Next to a liver biopsy, which of course is going to be, you know, much painful more painful and invasive. And invasive <laughs> expensive, right? I mean, that obviously is going to show you a lot more too, um, but the, the hair tissue mineral analysis is the test that you want to have done and have it done um, with proper interpretation. This is, this is the key to HTMA testing, hair tissue mineral analysis. Um, you cannot look at a hair test at face value because people will get it wrong and that just adds to the confusion. So make sure it's interpreted by someone who knows how to interpret a hair analysis. And then combine that hair analysis with your blood and that's going to give you a pretty darn good picture. Okay, so she's saying one uh, teaspoon once per day is one, what's being recommended. One teaspoon of copper? Mm. Do we have a milligrams? <laughs> um, so. 
Okay, why don't we just jump into copper then? Because um, I was going to talk about calcium and magnesium a little bit. And I'm going to post. Go into copper, but let's I'm going to post the, H, the HTMI just so you are HTMA. Sorry, testing. Um, Rick is absolutely an expert in this, and I've had the testing done. Alan and I have both had the testing done ourselves, and he does a full-on medical report, and then he also does a summary in layman's terms for those of us that don't understand the sciencey aspect of it. Um, so that we can very quickly understand what's going on and uh, go into action and resolve our issues. So if you're looking for somebody who's phenomenally effective um, at doing the, the hair testing analysis and will give you all the information that you need, I absolutely highly recommend um, that you contact Rick Fisher to have that done. And it doesn't matter where you are. Um, you can actually harvest the hair yourself and have it send in and then he'll do the report. So uh, you don't have to worry about being local to Vancouver to have it done. He's got uh, clients that he works with all over the place. So go ahead about the, you said copper? Yeah, okay, so let's just jump into the topic of, of copper for a little bit. Um, so copper is something that every woman should be taught as basic health 101 by their, by their doctors and they're not. Um, we are living in an age of, uh, or what could be called a copper toxic society. People are inundated with copper. And this is why I'm very hesitant to say um, or to agree that, maybe that copper is what you need right now. Um, so first and foremost, anything that raises estrogen raises your copper retention. So that right there should be a hello for women, like, you know, doctors should be teaching that as your estrogen goes up, your copper goes up. And then this goes on to affect other minerals as well. Your copper goes up, your calcium, tissue calcium rises, magnesium drops, sodium goes up, potassium drops, um, manganese goes down. So as copper, as copper, right, uh, sorry, so there's the estrogen connection. Estrogen is not only our our natural hormones, it's also, you gotta consider the xenoestrogens, xenoestrogens being um, like makeup products, skincare products, parabens, um, insecticides, plastic bottles, um, phytoestrogens, which are the food-based estrogens like flax, soy, um, legumes. Um, so the xenoestrogens, phytoestrogens, um, estrogens, period. Um, then you've got, um, so for women, again, pregnancy, right? So during pregnancy, every woman's copper, uh, blood copper, copper level, almost doubles while zinc drops. Now, if she's breastfeeding, she's able to offload some of that built up copper. Um, if she's bottle feeding, a lot of that built up copper is not able to get out of her body, which leaves her then with an inherent, um, you know, excess copper, lower zinc um, imbalance, which then compounds with, with each successive childbirth. Um, stress increases copper retention. Um, uh, I lost my train of thought here. <laughs> so we're talking specifically about um, Amanda oh, the pill. and her blood. Yes. The pill. Okay, so the pill. So oral contraception. So the pill is a major contributing factor to why across the population for the past 50, 60 years, we've seen copper levels rise at, at the And at the, the copper IUD, level. right? Well, so this is what happens. So a girl is given the, the pill, might have reactions to it, um, psychological reactions to it, so the doctor then says, oh, well, let's give you a non-hormonal alternative, like the copper IUD, it's totally safe. So she goes on a copper IUD, which feeds more copper now directly into the body, and absolutely, the copper IUD can have horrendous psychological um, implications. Um, you know, I've, I've had stories of tragedy of, of girls who've killed themselves, because of the reactions they've had from the copper IED. And not all cases are that extreme, but on coppertoxic.com, which is... Um, I just posted it. Okay, so on coppertoxic.com, there's a tab, Cases and Stories, and there is, you know, a hundred odd um, stories I've posted there of reactions that women have had by going on their copper IED. And um, the, the particular person that I was talking to you guys about when I first was introducing him, um, the client of mine, that was the question that he asked. He actually asked her if she had a copper IUD and she said yes. And it was absolutely amazing how, uh, when she got it taken out, um, how much relief she actually felt immediately. Um, and then of course, you know, continued to feel more balanced um, emotionally. And I, it didn't even occur to me to ask her that question because I didn't have that information at the time. 
and then I go to this, you know, mixer for health practitioners and, and you know, reunited with Rick because we actually knew each other a number of years ago. Um, and it was absolutely amazing. As soon as I brought him to the table, he asked the right questions and knew exactly what was going on physiologically. And I didn't even know that that was contributing to the psychosis that my client was experiencing. So it was such a relief to me to understand how much it actually does contribute to psychosis and that it literally is a matter of just getting that information through an incredibly simple hair analysis to balance that out. So I'm so excited to, to learn this and to have you guys learn this and have the opportunity to. So please look at those links that I posted um, that, uh, that are about Rick and about what he does and the coppertoxic.com and stuff. And if you guys know anybody uh, that has a copper IUD or is thinking about getting one, please share that website because that website specifically is about that issue in itself. And he created a singular website for it because it is such a big issue on its own outside of all the other health issues that we suffer from having our minerals out of balance, right? This is really one of the biggest health epidemics of our time and people are just unaware of it because it is suppressed and denied. And uh, the implications are, it, it goes, it's not just a psychological copper, it really affects the neurotransmitters in the brain, our thought processes, our reactions, um, but it also has a lot of um, physiological effects as well. Um, so as copper, Copper is an excitotoxin, which basically means that it stimulates the, the brain. An excitotoxin. I'm sorry, I'm just going to slow you down because sure. that's a new word for the audience. Okay, so. excitotoxin. Excitotoxin. I actually kind of like that. I know it's probably bad, but... <laughs> yeah. Well, it has... So when you supplement copper, supplementing copper has a similar effect as taking the drug deamphetamine. Okay. Okay? It's, studies have been done to prove this. You take copper, 5 milligrams copper, 5 milligrams deamphetamine, the effect is the same. So what happens when the, when the mind and body is overstimulated over time, yeah, you feel good. That's why people can market copper products because it makes you feel good. But the more stimulated you are over and over and over again, the more it's taking a toll on your adrenal system. And eventually that overstimulation wears you out and then you fall into fatigue. And with fatigue and with, adrenal, with ever increasing adrenal burnout, now, your liver is not able to adequately produce this protein called ceruloplasmin. Ceruloplasmin is the protein that binds the copper to make it available. So what happens is you've got now all of this bio-unavailable copper. Why? Because stemming in large part from excess copper in the first place. Excess copper um, excites, then fatigues, then impairs the liver's production of ceruloplasmin, which leads to unbound copper, which leads to bio-unavailable copper. So uh, this copper deficiency is, is rampant, but you can't just say copper deficiency. You have to ask, why are you deficient in copper? And for most people, it's coming from excess copper in the first place. Okay, I also didn't mention like um, copper sulfate. So copper sulfate, is sprayed on a large um, percentage of our food supply, our, our crops. Um, it's an organic, it's allowed to be sprayed as an organic um, herbicide, pesticide, um, in North America, even though in Europe they know it's a toxin and it's outlawed in certain, uh, I think France and other countries in Europe, it's banned because they know it's toxic. But here in North America, oh no, spray it on the organic produce and eat your organic food and people aren't aware that that's increasing their copper load as well. Copper piping in homes is another factor, right? So if your home has copper piping, you're drinking water through that piping, uh, it's a good chance that it's probably leaching some inorganic copper into your water supply, which further adds to your copper level. Then the other thing to consider on this topic of copper is zinc, okay? So zinc and copper are antagonistic. Okay. In other words, one goes up, uh, the other goes down and vice versa, generally speaking. But we are living in a time when most people have a zinc deficiency. So the zinc deficiency further allows copper to increase further. So um, why zinc deficiency? Well, again, things like stress, stress depletes zinc. Um, phytates, so phytates in our um, uh, grains uh, deplete zinc. So, so for every vegetarian and vegan, 
Um, they're eating enough zinc, that's not the problem. The milligrams is, is fine, but you have to consider the absorption, how much zinc is actually being absorbed. And then the other thing to consider is HCL, hydrochloric acid production, right? So um, most vegetarians, vegans will have, you know, and, and not everyone, there's, there's always the um, anomalies. Of course. Right? Um, but generally speaking, most vegetarians, vegans will have low potassium at the cellular level, even though they're eating lots of potassium rich foods, um, and a zinc deficiency because that zinc is not being absorbed. Um, and, and that circles back to low hydrochloric acid production. So you need zinc to um, activate hydrochloric acid, but without hydrochloric acid, your zinc's not being absorbed. So it's this vicious <laughs> cycle, right? So you have a deficiency of both, right? And then deficiency of hydrochloric acid means that your enzymes aren't being activated and digestive issues. Um, so really you've got to be looking at zinc and hydrochloric acid together, especially if potassium is also low because you need sodium, um, potassium and zinc to optimize your hydrochloric acid production in your gut um, for optimal enzyme activity, right? So, um, I probably went off on a big tangent there, didn't I? No, that's absolutely brilliant. It's a lot of information for everyone to digest, but the beautiful thing is, is this video is gonna be posted on the top of the GA page for the next week, so they can review it as many times as they want. And if you guys have any questions, about this you can absolutely get a hold of him as well and he would be happy to answer your questions the website and all the information is going to be posted there so we are happy to follow up with you and and, and so with the collagen um products uh you've got to consider copper as well so copper Copper, I mentioned this five minutes ago, copper deficiency is, yes, you need to consider copper deficiency, but you have to understand that most copper deficiency, like I said, comes from excess copper in the first place. But the end effect is bio-unavailable copper. Well, you need copper because, uh, so copper is not all bad. The body needs copper for energy production, for bone integrity, and for collagen. Okay, so copper activates the lysyl oxidase enzyme, which cross-links collagen fibers. So when we're talking about collagen, we have to understand things like zinc, copper, and manganese. These all are necessary for uh, collagen um, production. Okay, so we've already talked now about the, um, the issue of copper biounavailability stemming from excess copper. Um, and the other two that I mentioned were zinc and manganese. So what does excess copper do? It lowers zinc. Well, if you want to optimize your, your um, collagen, you got to optimize your zinc. You also got to optimize your manganese. Well, what does copper do? Excess copper lowers manganese, right? So these three things, this copper man is like, a, it's a major contributing factor to understanding collagen. Um, now, should we go, go into calcium, magnesium? Well, hold on a second. So we've got somebody in the audience that wants to, or needs to balance her copper. So what's the best uh, way to do so without just taking copper because we know we can't just Take copper because you're talking about we're getting a, we're getting access to all sorts of copper But we're copper toxic right. because it's bio unavailable copper. So how do I optimize my copper? If I need it, right it comes down to um, working on many things together at the same time, your adrenal system, your liver function, digestive health, all of these play a role, um, and, and, and balancing the other nutri uh, nutrients as well. Uh, so for example, when you say balancing copper, that's a really big um, uh, undertaking. Like when you say balancing copper, are you meaning like you, so 20% of people have a true copper deficiency. Those people are fast metabolizers, so they can benefit by taking more copper. <clears throat> but 80% of the population um, has a copper toxicity induced copper deficiency. And Whoa. those people don't really need more copper. They are fatigued, they have digestive issues, they need to be working on their adrenal system, which will support their liver, to support their ceruloplasmin production, which will then go up, which in turn then makes copper available. Okay, um, you also need to detox, okay? Um, but detoxing, now this is, this, this is if you have excess copper. So the detoxing of copper needs to be done really carefully. My voice is turning into a frog because I'm talking nonstop. Just... 
<laughs> this is water, not vodka. Or is it vodka? Vodka. <laughs> it's very good filtered water. Nice, it's good. <laughs> yes. Speaking of water, I do all these tangents. Speaking of water, you want to make sure that you're not using reverse osmosis water because reverse osmosis water um, and distilled water depletes your minerals, especially calcium. But if you are doing like reverse osmosis or um, distilled water, add some mineral drops to your water to make it hydrating and nutritious for you. Um, so optim it, So the thing that I was looking at because she was saying that she had her live blood cells looked at under a microscope, which to anybody that doesn't understand how to get information about stuff, if my doctor does a blood test on me and he says that he looked at my live blood cells and this is what he's saying is what I need to take, it sounds pretty official, but it's not giving us a true information of the deficiencies because what we need to be looking at, like you said before, it's really important to reiterate this as to what is going on in the cells. And the only way essentially to get a picture of that is to do the hair analysis that is giving a better picture of that, right? Or at least combine it with the blood. Yeah, don't just go off the blood alone. Yeah, it doesn't, it doesn't hurt to do both, but I absolutely, I, I've never even had my doctor analyze that information, yeah. like to do the blood test and everything. And, and you would have then, I mean, the more information, the more tests that you can do, the better, right? Absolutely, yeah. Um, you know, on, on that note, let's talk about like thyroid, for example. Um, I have so many clients who come to me with all the classic um, hypothyroid, thyroid hypofunction symptoms, but their doctor says they're fine, their, their blood markers are fine. Um, well, okay, so if the blood markers are fine, that's, that's a good first step. But we have to look at, well, what is the effect? What is the down, downstream effect of, um, the thyroid hormone. So we haven't even talked about calcium yet. I want to keep going back to calcium, but um, to, uh, to to segue quickly or to foreshadow quickly, what I will say is that we are overcalcified. Um, and I'll explain why that is. Um, we're overcalcified, and most people have an underlying potassium deficiency at the cell level. So what happens then is you've got your thyroid hormone, which okay, so the blood level is fine, good. Um, but what's happening at the cellular level? If you have excess calcium, that thyroid hormone is, is not able to efficiently enter the cell. Then if you have low potassium inside the cell, that um, thyroxine is not being um, um, adequately synthesized um, by the mitochondria. So you can have adequate hormone levels. That's half the picture. But I wanna look at what's the effect so if, if that hormone is not actually doing its job in the cell or can't even get into the cell, well, that's going to also contribute to symptoms. So the work I do, I'm not, I'm not, uh, I'm not a doctor. I'm not addressing the thyroid itself, but I'm addressing the, the symptoms. And very often we can address the symptoms by helping um, make the minerals more efficient, which then helps, uh, like I said, alleviate the symptoms often. Um, so, Shall I go into calcium or potassium? Or, I feel like that where, was do wanna, good, where do you want to go? That was a good where do you go? segue into calcium. So let's do calcium. That's amazing. Okay. Um, so calcium, obviously important for bone health, um, blood clotting, the nervous system. Nervous system is a really key role for calcium. Um, but we think of bone health. But really, when we talk about bone health, magnesium is much more important. Absolutely. Right? It's magnesium that keeps calcium in your bone. And when you have a magnesium deficiency... Your, your... eyes start twitching. <laughs> well, yeah, so, yeah, your eyes That's your eyes how Rick knew that I had a magnesium deficiency. Yeah. He was hanging around me and he was like, your eyes twitching. You need magnesium. And I was like, what? Is that why it's doing that? I thought something was just stressing me out. Nope, it was magnesium. And as soon as I took it that day, it stopped. Yeah, I mean, quite often, like, um, muscle spasms, muscle twitches are either magnesium deficiency or potassium deficiency, one of those two. Which I have both. And, and <laughs> commonly, the eye twitch is a magnesium deficiency. Yeah. yeah. And it's funny, because I, I was starting to get the cramps um, in my legs and my feet and stuff like that, too, so I was absolutely experiencing the, you know, the symptoms. My body was very much telling me um, that I was magnesium deficient, and when I balanced that out, it completely resolved the issue. So your body does 
there, depending on the, the specific thing that you're going on, but there are certain signs and signals and stuff that your body will give you to let you know that it's deficient in things. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, and the trick is like catching those symptoms at the early stage before they uh, snowball into something bigger. And the big challenge is, is yeah. who's communicating with, us, communicating with us to actually help us understand the language of the body so that we can understand it to then nurture it and give it what it needs. Right. You. Right. Ta-da! Well, <laughs> um, I was going to talk about uh, like a personal story about tendons um, oh, and yeah. manganese, but Do it. Um, I, I want to go back to calcium. <laughs> okay, so so um, you can remind me about tendons after. What do you do to correct magnesium deficiency? Okay, so magnesium deficiency is pretty much every single person has magnesium deficiency. <clears throat> so there's a lot of things you have to consider. Um, Obviously, supplementation is going to be almost imperative. Yeah. Okay, you, you need to be supplementing magnesium. It's almost impossible to get enough magnesium and potassium through diet alone. It's possible, but it's pretty hard. Um, so supplementation. Now, among other things which I'll mention. Um, in terms of supplements, um, most of what, at least here in the you know our, our local stores, our, our supermarkets and whatnot, most of what is sold is like an oxide or a citrate form of magnesium, which is not very good absorption. Uh, it has more of a laxative effect, but it's not going to do much in terms of helping build up your body's uh, stores of magnesium. So uh, in terms of supplementing magnesium to raise your body level, uh, you want to do things like magnesium glycinate, magnesium malate, magnesium chloride, um, transdermal magnesium like Epsom salt baths, which is chloride. Um, you can do like magnesium spray as well. Um, those are um, high, high absorption forms of magnesium. Then you have to look at stress because stress depletes magnesium. So as long as you're under high stress, you're going to be going one step forward with your diet and supplements, but taking one step back with your stress. Um, alcohol, alcohol depletes magnesium. Caffeine, caffeine depletes magnesium, right? So um, you have to be addressing lifestyle, and diet to properly address magnesium. Boron, we haven't talked about boron yet, <clears throat> but um, boron supports magnesium. I'm sounding like a frog again, aren't I? <laughs> <clears throat> so boron su um, supports magnesium absorption. And sometimes we'll see like a depleted boron level and that's like a clear sign. This person has had like a chronic magnesium deficiency. Um, so, in that case, you know, you want to be doing boron and, and magnesium together. So, again, it depends on what's happening at the cell and tissue level that we can customize a program that's, you know, targeted towards your unique situation. Um, but certainly supplementation and lifestyle calming activities. I like to take a really good um, time-release magnesium uh, that is really fantastic orally, and then I also use um, ancient minerals. Uh, in the bath as well in my big huge jetted soak tub, which is really nice. So um, I find topically and orally I do the combination of the two and it's really really supportive. So I posted a link uh, specifically for the brand that I find that both of us generally tend to like so you can totally go and peruse that for um, the magnesium that we actually support because I know he listed all the don'ts and then all the do's and then it probably just went pew, so <laughs> if we give you a recommendation of what we like, you can at least go and take a look at that and see what they are and then find more of the like or just go for those. Yeah, so then what happens with the low, the low magnesium, uh, well, under stress and low magnesium go hand in hand. So, so either of those, magnesium is lost from the bone, leads to cortical thinning of the bone. Um, you can be doing calcium, taking calcium for your bone, like every woman is told as she gets older, take calcium for your bone, and that's actually leading to osteoporosis. What? If osteoporosis was a calcium deficiency so disease... just have a glass of milk a day and then... Listen to this. If, okay. if osteoporosis okay. was a calcium deficient disease, then why do the countries with the highest dairy and calcium intakes have the highest rates of osteoporosis? Right? It's not oh. about the calcium. It's about keeping the calcium in your bone. And to do that, you need your magnesium. You need your available copper. Okay? Um, so what happens under stress, calcium comes out of, 
out of the bone, it goes into the soft tissue. With magnesium deficiency, same thing. Calcium comes out of the bone, goes into your soft tissue. Magnesium, like adequate magnesium, activates calcitonin, which helps um, remove calcium, like soft tissue calcium, and send it back to the bone. So without that magnesium, your calcitonin is not doing its job, and your, your soft tissues are calcifying, and your cellular levels of calcium are increasing. You don't want high levels of calcium in your bone in your uh, in your cells. Your cell has thousands of thousands of times more magnesium than calcium. A healthy cell, okay, a healthy cell has way more magnesium than calcium. But what happens with calcification, which is affecting like so many people today, um, their their soft tissues are calcifying and their cells are calcifying. More calcium is coming into the cell. It's blocking nutrients from getting into the cell, blocking hormone from getting into the cell, um, leading to cell death. Okay, excess calcium in the cell leads to cell death, and too much cell death leads to death. Okay, so <laughs> you, you, how much more simple do I make it? Right. That's so awesome. calcification is you don't want more calcification. You want calcium to be happy in bone. That's where it's happy. Okay, you don't want calcium. Um, then, there, then there's the, the whole glucose thing and diabetes, right? So if you have this calcium coming out of your bone and going into your soft tissue and going into your cell and, and, and impairing cell um, um, absorption of nutrients, now your blood glucose can't get into the cell. Your, your insulin can't get into your cell, so it elevates the blood because it's staying in the blood, right? Um, and this is what happens when you have excess calcium and low magnesium. Then you wonder why diabetes is so prevalent because everybody under the sun has low magnesium and high calcium. Right? So by taking magnesium, you're supporting a healthy calcium level. And by having a healthy calcium level, if all of you guys are um, chewing on your Probita, uh, it's actually supporting the absorption and the usage of the collagen as well, which is really amazing. Yeah. Um, and then we could talk about iodine, right? So iodine has this scary connotation. Um, but you need iodine to support the adrenals and to support calcium, bringing down that calcification. So if a person has adrenal fatigue and um, excess tissue calcification and thyroid issues, well, holy, like that's like a perfect formula for like taking iodine. But you don't just want to run out and, and um, shoot back some iodine because that can be dangerous, and that's <laughs> part of the reason why iodine has a scary connotation. So. Iodine has a scary connotation because of two reasons. One, it's detoxifying. So it is, um, when you have an iodine deficiency, these toxic halides, things like fluoride and bromide, um, take the place of iodine in the cell receptor sites. These are toxins, okay? So now you take iodine, which allows your body to release these toxins. But as you release, as you detox, you can have negative effects. So a person takes iodine, they don't feel good. Oh, iodine is the bad thing. Well, no, it's not. It's understanding that the iodine is releasing something that's bad and helping you in the detox process. Um, the other aspect with iodine is when you take iodine with um, a selenium deficiency, that can actually induce autoimmune conditions. So this is why you never want to be taking iodine unless you know that you have adequate selenium first. Um, so, and, and when you when you have adequate selenium in your body, um, then studies have shown that you can take iodine and actually reverse, I, I don't want to say totally reverse autoimmunity, I mean, that, that's going too far, um, but you can take iodine um, and, and be much safer uh, doing so. Um, so, are there any other ones that you need to cover? How are we doing here? <laughs> We're doing absolutely fantastic. Yeah, so you know, for like glutathione, you need your magnesium, you need boron, you need selenium um, for glutathione synthesis. Okay. Um, for collagen, like I mentioned, you need your manganese, your copper, your zinc, bioavailable. Um, so yeah, this is this is the stuff that I. This is just I, I've talked really fast here, and I, I apologize if I um, ramble too much. Um, but this is the stuff that I go through in detail in Mineral Mastery. This is why I created this course, because I think I'm going to guess that a lot of what I've said here might be new to some of you. Um, and it's certainly not 
common knowledge um, amongst most people. Uh, and I, I've seen in my personal life, and I see every day in my busy, busy practice with clients who come to me who've been told by their doctor to do this and that, and they're getting worse or they're not being helped, and then I test them, and I don't have all the answers either, and the HTMA is not a panacea by any means but it certainly will give uh, an amazing new window into looking at uh, the human body, uh, your body, the, the nutrient imbalances that are happening, and give a roadmap to uh, corrective um, nutrition. So if we want to get a little bit of a better understanding um, about minerals, because there is obviously a lot of information that has come at us in the last um, hour, which is absolutely amazing. How can I go about learning more in my own time and digesting um, in a headspace where that totally works for me? What do you have? That is a great question, Harvey. Yeah, so, right? Um, yeah, so the website is mineralmastery.com. Um, it is an online course. You have your own dashboard. You log in. Um, it's your own account. And when you log in, you have all the videos there in front of you that you can go through at your own pace. Uh, there's no webinars to schedule a time to attend or any, any of that. Um, you have lifetime access, go through the videos as often as you want. Uh, I go through um, all the misconceptions about you know, uh, why we're deficient, why we have toxicities, calcium, magnesium, and their, imbal and their, uh, their ratio. Um, I didn't even talk about the, the study, did I? Did I mention the 51 year study? No. Well, I'll, I'll leave you with, with this added little thought here. So there was a, a big landmark study from 1940 to 1991 where they analyzed, um, I think, 15,000 food crops. Um, and across the board from those 51 years, magnesium, sorry, calcium dropped 4%. The calcium content of food dropped 4%. The calcium content of magnesium dropped 20%. Okay, so I just finished talking in this video about this calcium-magnesium imbalance where we have too much calcium and, and, and not enough magnesium. And then you take something like dairy or milk, which is already too high in calcium to begin with, um, but then you compound that with understanding that in the past 50, 60, 70 years, um, magnesium has dropped in our food supply four times as fast as calcium. Wow. So even the things that our grandparents were consuming you know, even if they were getting a little bit too much calcium, I mean, who knows, but even if they were, now it's four times worse. Because wow. eating the exact same foods, we're getting far less magnesium um, and still too much calcium. Anyways. So if you guys want mm -hmm. some more information and you guys want to have the opportunity to be able to digest this absolutely profound knowledge that will really next level your health and support what you guys are already obviously doing to be proactive about your health otherwise you wouldn't be our audience and we love each and every one of you um, I have posted the link to his course in the chat box it's all been posted on the glutathione authority um, page as well you can totally go and check that out and like he said once you purchase uh, the course you do have it for the rest of your life so you can revisit that anytime that you want and any of you guys that want the opportunity to be able to uh, get the HTMA testing done uh, to next level your understanding as to what's going on with your health, um, for any of you guys that are dealing with any health challenges, you can absolutely um, get a hold of Rick for that as well. I've posted the link for the testing. Um, but and I, want, I want to do something special here just okay, because hold on. this is your audience. There's so a question. Go ahead. Oh, okay. Thank you. We really appreciate that. Um, so Lori Morgan is asking if someone has scoliosis, could they be low or could there be a mineral imbalance? Yeah, mm -hmm. I'd be looking at copper and calcium. Okay, wonderful. So Lori, um, actually this is applicable to you. If you're curious about where your minerals are at and um, what you can do to help balance them, I don't know if you were on earlier, but I just wanna support you um, specifically just so that you know, when you get the testing done, um, because he's a phenomenal um, leading expert in this arena, you get the full uh, clinical report, but he actually does uh, a more simplified report um, in case you don't understand all the sciencey stuff so that you can read that and you've got uh, support in regards to what supplements he recommends and who he's in alignment with. 
um, so that you're not feeling lost and not knowing what to do to balance your, your uh, minerals. So it's, it's absolutely phenomenal testing to get done to um, support all the other information that you're getting with the doctors and everything. I'm a fan of the more the merrier. So hormone testing through saliva and getting my hair tested for my minerals and whatever else can be done. I just think the more information I have, the more I can just stay looking young and hot forever. That's my goal. You guys know me. I just want to stay this way forever. So, so far I'm doing good, but we'll see what happens. And he's one of the people that I've absolutely brought into my roster of experts so that I can do that, which is why I wanted to bring him to you guys so that you could do the same for yourselves, whether you're dealing with a health challenge or you're healthy and you just want to be proactive the way that I do. So what did you have for our audience? Okay, well, well let me just back up and say like this, I, I, I do this work because I just see so many people making mistakes. And I didn't know this, I've been through nutrition school and none of this was taught to me and now it's like, you know, all of, all of the, the early stuff just doesn't matter anymore because when you understand these mineral imbalances and how they affect health, this is power. This empowers you yeah. to be proactive, to address um, possibly current symptoms or protect yourself from symptoms that may otherwise arise down the road. So the Mineral Mastery course, I have students ranging from, you know, everyday just general people to nutritionists, to PhDs, to doctors, physicians, all across the gamut and no matter what they're training whether they're you know um, like regardless of their training they are finding my course to be eye-opening and invaluable information so um, this could very well be the most um, important health education you might ever receive and it's it's seven hours of, of videos um, with some other um, bonuses as well but what I want to do for, for you guys is because, well, it's Harmony here and, and Alan, who we missed tonight. He's here in spirit. He's here in spirit, but for <laughs> you guys, um, I'm going to do something that uh, I don't usually very often do, um, at least not to this level. Um, so I'm going to discount, I'm going to give you guys a code um, that will discount the price of Mineral Mastery. Um, it's going to take, uh, it's, it's 497 is the course, um, lifetime access, uh, your own dashboard. Um, a certification as well at the end of the course. Anyways, I'm not going to take $100 off or $200 off. I'm going to give you half price for the next two days. Okay, so this is going to end on uh, Wednesday night. Wow. Okay, Wednesday night, this is going to end. But until Wednesday, um, if you enter the promo code glutathione, and how do you spell glutathione? With an E at the end, right? <laughs> yeah. Right? So glutathione is your promo code. Go to mineralmastery.com, enter glutathione. With a capital G? And that doesn't matter. Capital, small, doesn't matter. Okay, and that'll give you 50% off. And something I've never done before because I already have like not enough time in my hands. But for the first 10 people that do purchase, I'm going to throw in a one-on-one uh, -on -one half hour phone consultation wow. with you so that you can talk to me and ask me questions directly. Um, so that's the first 10 people only. Um, and uh, like I said, this code expires um, on Wednesday night. Uh, I just Wednesday. want you guys to know that this is something that he has never done in the time that I've known him whatsoever. So this is an absolutely amazing special deal. He is not doing this just to get sales. He's doing this because he loves me. Hence, he loves you guys. <laughs> So I absolutely recommend that you guys take advantage of this because it is probably the only time that this is ever going to happen. Um, by Wednesday night, that's gonna be it and you guys are the only ones that are getting um, this kind of a deal. I'm absolutely floored. He didn't tell me he was gonna do this. Um, so I'm, I'm really surprised and shocked and I really hope that you guys uh, take advantage and get this and get this knowledge for yourselves because um, like I said, I love and respect uh, the knowledge and the, res and the information that he has so much that I've made him a part of my program. So everybody who goes through, they pay full price um, if they want access to it. But for some reason, he wants to give you guys a special deal. So is there anything else? I could talk for hours more. <laughs> it's so funny because he was like, so is this going to go for like a half an hour? And I was like, no, no, no. We, we go on for about an hour. And we have easily hit the hour mark and he could keep going. So 
Um, but we, even just for copper, sorry to interrupt, Harvey, yeah, but yeah. even just for copper, um, coppertoxic.com, um, coppertoxic.com, a ton of information on there for free. Just, you know, just check it out and, and learn for yourselves about copper because it, it really is important, um, especially for women. Um, for yourself, if you have a daughter, you know, who's going on birth control, like she needs to know this information. This is, this is life changing information. So free information right there for you. Um, Lori Morgan was saying, I want that, but I'm not signed up yet. I could learn so much for my granddaughter. That's absolutely amazing. Lori, thank you so much. Uh, Lori was saying my seven year old granddaughter has back pain. Her doctor said it could be scoliosis. Um, it's obviously going to be up to him to be the one who's going to put the diagnosis in place, but um, it definitely doesn't hurt to get the course and to get that information and to absolutely even have the testing done to give you that much more information because it assists the doctor in even getting, you know, knowing what he needs to know. Um, Rob Bell is saying, wow, thank you. Um, this is absolutely a scenario where we need to give him lots of love and gratitude because like I said, I'm not messing around you guys. He's never done this before. Um, so I'm actually really and I'm nervous on Facebook live. <laughs> <laughs> I'm really surprised and shocked that he's giving us this kind of a deal. It's absolutely fantastic. If I didn't already have the course myself, I would be jumping on and buying it right now, but I already bought it a while ago. So <laughs> I really hope that you guys take advantage of it. And I really appreciate, um, and love each and every one of you. Like I said, this is going to be posted on the top of the GA page. And um, I'm also going to be posting this on YouTube. So if you guys have any friends that are not in the Facebook audience, please feel free to share um, from the YouTube channel uh, to anybody that you feel needs to have this information um, about copper IUDs and all of the rest of that. Uh, Chris Austin is saying the course is phenomenal. That is absolutely fantastic. I really appreciate you, you um, sharing that, Chris. That's really, really fantastic. So uh, I, again, like I said, love each and every one of you. Please feel free to hit the share button because this is open source knowledge. I want you guys to spread the word and help Rick get uh, his passion out there, which is really um, next leveling all of our information about how to support our health proactively, which I know each and every one of you guys appreciate, which is why you're in our audience. So. Thank you guys so much, and I'm sure Alan will be here next week. Same time, same place, and you're going off to Sweden. I'm off to Sweden to teach copper to the university over there. So He's actually yeah. being flown by scientists and experts to Sweden so that they can he can educate a bunch of scientists about it, which is so incredible. I'm so phenomenally proud of you for being recognized on that arena, and getting to go and educate experts and spread the word. So good luck and safe travels. Thank you and thank you for having me. Take care guys. Thanks. Love you all. Bye.